Hello, my name is Benjamin Arthur. I'm a software engineer at the Genelia Research Campus of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. In this talk, I'm going to describe trainbalancednet.jl, which is a pure Julia application to train artificial recurrent neural networks to recapitulate the dynamics observed in biological nervous systems. Let's get started. The brain is a dynamical system, and one of the techniques in neuroscience used to study it is to take biological recordings and to make a computer model of them to exactly re recapitulate how each neuron behaves. So here I'm showing you raster plots and peristimulus time, time, time histograms for two neurons out of a data set which contains thousands and the corresponding units in the computer model. You can see how they match. The idea here is that it's much easier to study the system dynamics in silico because you have full access to all the variables of interest. And so it can easily then go look for limit cycles and fixed point attractors and the like. Typically, what most people do is to model the membrane voltages of these N neurons with a set of coupled differential equations and then use an algorithm called force to recursively use least squares to get the peristimulus time histograms to match up. Recently, Chris Kim and Carson Chow at the NIH have taken this coupled differential equation model of membrane voltage and made it more realistic by modeling the fact that neurons spike, and that neurons typically only have synapses or that are all of the same kind, excitatory or inhibitory, and that in general within a circuit, there's gonna be equal amounts of inhibition and excitation. What I have done for them recently is to take their code base and to make it more performant so that we can scale up the size of data sets that we can model by two orders of magnitude. So what we have here is a recurrent neural network with N neurons. The excitatory ones are shown in green here, the inhibitory ones in gold circles. Every neuron is connected to some subset of other neurons with static connection shown here in gray. That number is K. Each neuron projects statically to K other neurons. In dashed magenta here is are the plastic connections. Each neuron responds to L, other neurons, and that these synapses are the ones that are learned. So using force, you have a desired pattern for each neuron in its PSTH, and then you iteratively train, and train them to match up. So the speed then, which, which you can learn then, is the loop time for each iteration, the time taken for each iteration, I'll call the loop time here, the reference code I was given uh, runs on the CPU only, and it was largely written in a way that facilitated algorithm development and validation. And using the standard bag of tricks, data parallelism, blasts, symmetric arrays, which I'll get into much more later, reduced precision, 16-bit uh, or 32-bit instead of 64-bit, and pre-computed division, um, I was able to speed that code up by roughly an order of magnitude. Of course, GPUs uh, offer even more data parallelism, and you can get another factor of 10, roughly, uh, by porting everything over the GPU. So this benchmark data was all uh, using a data set, that, a synthetic data set, that simply consisted of sinusoids as the basis function that we were training against, sinusoids for the PSTHs instead of real data. But I want to show you that it actually works on real data as well, real biological data. So here's a data set containing 50,000 neurons. And you can see that after about an hour, using uh, 256 learned connections per each neuron, we can get a correlation between the biological PSTH and the artificial PSTH of about 0.8. Just to show you what the data look like, down here in magenta are the biological PSTHs that we want to learn. And in gold are the artificial computer-generated PS corresponding PSTHs. And you can see how nicely they overlap. These 50,000 neurons were actually recorded in five different regions of the brain, and we get a nice correspondence across all five regions. Now, I mentioned earlier that part of the performance tuning of this code base was to use symmetric matrices, packed symmetric matrices in particular. There is one internal state variable called P in the source code, which is a covariance matrix and it is of size L by L, and there's one of these guys for each of the N neurons. 
As it happens, it's only accessed twice, once to be read during a GEMV operation, and once to be updated during a GER call. Because this is n by l by l, and all other variables in the code are only two-dimensional, this, for large models, consumes about 90% of the memory. So you have to ask yourself, what if we pack it as follows? So instead of storing the full L by L, we just concatenate the columns in either the upper or the lower triangle into a vector like this. Now we have a more complicated indexing calculation to perform. It requires an extra bit shift and subtraction on top of a multiplication and an addition that a normal indexing operation requires. So you might think that would slow it down a bit. But in fact, overall, these two operations, when converted into their packed equivalents, SPMV and SPR, are about 10% faster because the update operation only has half as many elements to update. So not only then do you save a factor of two in memory, but you gain simultaneously about 10% in speed. So I broke the code that deals with packed symmetric matrices out into two separate packages to make it easier for others to use. Specifically, symmetricformats.jl, whose GitHub page is over here, defines a symmetric packed type, which is very similar to this linear algebra standard library's symmetric type. So you can take a dense array, you can pack it like so, and then inside is simply a vector of the concatenated columns, which uses about half as many bytes as uh, the regular dense array. You can take that AP Stru uh, uh, struct, and you can use it inside last calls, as well as the equivalent Julian, uh, more Julian interface, Moldane. Similarly, batchedblast.jl uh, provides uh, kernels for SPR and SPMV, as well as the symmetric unpacked equivalents, SYR and SYMV. And the advantage here on top of that is because these are pure Julian kernels, they will work with any abstract floats or integer types. And the scaling coefficients, which in uh, CU glass have to be scalars, can now, also, can now here also be vectors. So here you define a dense three-dimensional array, for example, and, and then uh, you allocate a two-dimensional matrix on the device, and slice by slice you can pack that three-dimensional matrix into the uh, device array, and you get a matrix in the end. And then, as before, you can just um, call uh, the regular uh, batched uh, routines, SPR in this case, uh, and, and then you can check to see that it's uh, equivalent to uh, doing everything by hand. So I've run out of time to show to walk you through the trained balance net.jl interface, but you can find it here. By the time you watch this video, it will be public, and I'm happy to field any questions about it. Thanks for your time.